Okay, new streaming setup. <laughs> There's a few kinks along the way. Pressing with chat. Hey, okay. Uh, trying to help with a couple of things, a couple of feedback items we've received along the way. One of the key items, what's the current? So I'm working on an integration Twitch that I can edit the description of our stream. Really easy. I have and an auto up type in 35 different places. So that's my goal. Not all the way there yet, uh, but I've been learning a lot. It's been a good week. I figured a few new things out. So I've been pretty happy with how things are going. Got a new setup. Some cool. Uh, so here we are, 2020. Got a request. Uh, I was struggling a little bit to figure out exactly what to discuss as usual from our comes through. Yeah, the static movement or the static noise was cool, but it was like a little bit glaring. Yeah, I, I think I can shrink that top piece relatively. So that's something I'm gonna work on. It is a bit blinding. I'm trying to figure it out. But most importantly, your feedback is fantastic. Yeah, so we're we're done with that static east. It was a little bit distracting for me, and I wasn't staring at other people. I'm gonna fix that problem. But yeah, I'm I'm gonna reduce white things. It doesn't need to be. trying to find the right balance to where there's enough useful information on the screen and uh, not just my giant face. Because <laughs> nobody wants that. Well, maybe my, maybe my wife, but that's a different story. Okay, so uh, initial topic for the day as requested on Discord. I have not been to our Discord chat. The link, then we'll get you need. Effective goal resolution setting for personal career development. This is one of those things where from you guys is, as you may have heard once or twice, I've been doing before I progress challenges where I try to do a little. So that's, that's something that I'm continually working on. What I, what I've been trying to do based on feedback from folks like agile biker and everybody else here, and keep me in check really just like we preach any from team setting get one thing to done that's been my biggest distractor for the years is myriad of ideas and things i want to do and differences i want to make i end up doing the thing that's opposite from against two for all of the teams that i coach use work in progress link Focus on getting things to done. How can you do get that? What are the things that are stopping you? Now, for the past five or so years, I've I've really transitioned to some things not work. Like it to work. The best answer is from principle, and I found that when, personally. Or if I'm trying to scale a process up, I often too much noise or process use what got me there as a scrum master and coach and apply that directly to the problem. And it's amazing, simple, that solution it goes back to some of the previous things we've talked about, about how so often we as humans overcomplicate. So when you're working through goals, trying to figure out what your goals should be, 
or you're struggling with a specific goal, the thing that I've found a lot of success. Making it simple, what's, what, what's the least amount I can do? So one of the things I always talk about is the minimum viable everything. The amount of change I can put in place. Accomplish this goal. Run a bunch of experiments like that. So that's been, that's been my basic thoughts from everybody else. This here. Topic. Topic, I Only two T's in setting. I'm wondering. Didn't know if you were, but uh, I apparently was. That's one of those things that um, I think if we go back to just applying Scrum principle, I think if you have that. Treat, treat your goal as an epic and then think through plan out set of stories get that done spend some time finding those stories talking about talking about self maybe maybe to a friend or peer or something like that talking with them and trying to understand what the right priority of those things are and then Heaven forbid, iterate on that and refine it after you learn some more. Give yourself a nice little personal print demo. Do a retrospective. Say, hey, how am I progressing on this path? Am I on track to get the epic done? By the time I'd like to get it done? By the time I thought I'd get it done? Yeah, that's again, Scrum Sarge. That's 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 been super helpful for me over the years. I'm terrible about this. I, I, we all know it. If you've been on any stream, you've heard me lament about the challenge. Agile bikers quick to bonk me in, appropriately so about my progress limit, and just I don't apply those principles personally. I think if you can coach yourself by expecting more successful outcome with reaching goals. <laughs> it is it is amazing. And it's one of those things where I I actually love it. I'm gonna call, call me out on is then when that happens, when one of your teams as an agile coach you out for doing something on Agile, that's a good indicator that they what you professing previous months, years, whatever it might be, it was always kind of exciting when teams like talk about work in progress limit all the time. And it's helpful for them to see a bad example. And then you can say, oh yeah, it is kind of annoying to watch somebody not have a good work in progress limit. Right? Yeah, I, I am, uh, spent the past year just working to minimize the items. Making small progress, not as much as I'd like, but definitely small. Yeah, I think, Lynn, um, that's something that I'm guilty of, is not, and I think a lot of Agile coaches fall into this trap, is that we are helpers, we are problem solvers. Obtain uh, satisfaction, joy, whatever it might be, from helping others achieve. Too often, me primarily, that 
prevents myself from focusing on myself. So oftentimes, my own personal sprint goes, runs instead of two weeks, at four weeks, I don't have a review, I don't have a retrospective, I don't, don't make time for myself to plan out these things. So that's something that I think I could be effective in achieving goals or whatever it might be if I were able to prioritize time for myself. And that's something that my wife tell about making time for the things that have been fantastic about encouraging me and supporting me. And that so often all of my energy and focus, and I assume most of the people stream fall into that same where happiness is often driven by success of others and grow work so then you minimize the time spent focusing on yeah i do think it's just one of those things where it's the nature of the beast the beast being i the beast being we are we are really really good at helping Unfortunately, at the detriment of helping ourselves. That's my theory, Scrum Sarge. Yeah. Interesting thing. Like, you know, I go to, I go back to sports and think about all those very successful coaches and stories you hear about them sleeping in their office. They're making millions of dollars, probably an amazing house, probably the most comfortable, comfortable bed you could buy. They uh, want a couch in their office because they're putting everything else before them. They're putting preparation before their own health and happiness. Now, maybe their happiness is derived by the success of the team. But in the end, that ultimately limits its own health. And that. Yeah, I tell you what, pa paper planners. Um, I write so rarely that my writing is worse than my ten-year-old. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, but true. Yeah, Lynn, I think your comment about um, daily, weekly, and monthly is very similar to the multi-tiered planning that I talk about. So I talk about sprint planning, then a PSI or big room planning that forecasts out the sprints, and then a annual forecast. I think having those multiple horizons helps you things in check and helps you in deliver a product numerous times be surprised how successful you are when you treat everything as a product give it a backlog the appropriate ceremony to do that and they do it for well that's kind of sneaky then like Arno da Vinci writing backwards <laughs> Yes, yeah, Scrum Sarge, that's, that's, uh, it's actually I had a really good discussion with, um, a person I worked with probably a year and a half ago that I was able to convince myself that focusing on my health was a top priority for my family because that would be the thing that would force me to do it. Not that it was a top priority for myself, right? Put others first. I convinced myself that I should focus on it because of the benefit for my family as breadwinner, as the father, the husband, as those things that I needed to be there. Which is kind of weird, but it actually worked given the 
mental norms that a lot of coaches that I assume have. Yeah, it was weird because I, I just wouldn't prioritize myself, but I could convince myself to prioritize things because of the benefit I saw for others. Probably not very healthy <laughs> of an approach, but that's the reality. That was one of those things that uh, forced me to make some, some changes. A psychologist that is listen to this and petrified. Uh, okay, so one, one thing I would like to ask. I don't know that everybody actually watches the stream, but if you can, give me an update on how audio is thinking the video that isn't that that takes some tweaking and with different setups and a new computer where that it's off but yes yeah, scrum sarge that that was my wife's been trying to get me to do all of the things and when i stopped it as uh, for me and as for others, it felt this like responsibility, and that responsibility is the thing that drives me. You go through, and uh, actually, Bob and I are talking about it. Your podcast, our strength fighters, and whatever all the other personality us all. One of the things that's very high. Responsibility. So that's why I think think that treating it as it's the responsible thing for me, others. Oh boy! Look who look who just dropped in. Mr. Party Person. <laughs> Agile Biker. Okay. Um, so Scrum Sarge and skipping every five to seven seconds. Yeah, I've got like a monster of a PC driving this thing now that's much stronger than my MacBook Pro that I was running it on. Yeah, they must have been burning. You are correct. So, uh, one of the topics that came up today, effective goal setting. Uh, yes, some stories. You can decide if they're good or bad. Uh, no, I was talking about goal setting and things like that. And oh, I may or may not struggle with personal work in progress limits. And luckily... There's some people that keep me in line. Thank goodness. Because it is needed. <laughs> Terribly. Somebody has to, and I appreciate it greatly. I might grumble. The Agile Biker appropriately calls me out on my work in progress limit challenges. But yeah. And I appreciate, like I said, I appreciate it. I not give off a good vibe that yes, I out, but it's appreciated. No, I need everybody needs that needs that coach to keep them in line. Because I clearly don't do a good. All right, so agile biker topic of the day. Um, is goal setting, goal planning. We talked about work in progress limits. Uh, we then started talking about um, strange 13 year old boys walking in the background. <laughs> uh, am I talking softly? It's a new setup, my friend. I'm trying to not yell. Um, and I'm trying to be mindful of the audio. I've got this like audio level checker thing that I'm trying to keep within a specific range so as to not blow people's ears out. So
So uh, let's see, we talked about applying Scrum principles, basically everything, uh, be it any typical thing we might do in our job, but also personally, about having personal retrospectives, personal planning, personal refinement, all of those things, how I've been successful for me. Uh, so throwing that out there, if that's one of those things that if you're struggling a little bit, you might want to give that a shot. Works for me, might not work for everybody. Um, we then talked about, let's see. Oh, we talked about how for me, a successful tool in getting me to actually do stuff is to flip it around and it works in my brain when I convince myself that I'm actually not doing it for me, I'm doing it for others. So health is one of those things that I can convince myself, and I have successfully, that focusing on my health isn't really about me, it's about ensuring that I'm there to provide and support for my family. Then it put this responsibility weight on me, and that's that's a key driver for me, is that when I feel that responsibility around doing something for others, then I found that I'm more effective at getting it done. So that's, that's one of those things that worked for me. But I don't know what else others do. Uh, Lynn, has uh, paper notes and writes intentionally messy. Skies her secret. Um, I don't write in messy terribly. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not a good, uh, not a good approach for me. Works for Lynn, but not for me, because then I can't read it. I tell you the one thing about writing for me is that because I do it so infrequently, I, my brain actually focuses on writing. I found that I then take my focus off of the thing I should be paying attention to. I'm more effective at typing, but it's amazing how distracting that is to other people in many settings. That's that, but. It's the best way for me to take notes. Uh, I haven't found a way to do it. Really, I guess, or in a non-distracting way, but yeah. So that's been thinking for me. Uh, goal setting. What did Agile Biker? How do you solve this problem? Lynn, I'll spend some time a little bit later trying to sync up the audio. Tweaking on done. Yeah, I do feel a lot of people talk about that same thing from Sarge um, about forcing yourself to write something down that like crystallizes it or it etches it in your brain that you're going to remember it. So I try to do that. Uh, but uh, to your point, Scrum Sarge, I, I like never go back. Like I have notebooks of things that I've written and I go back and I find them like months or <laughs> I scratch my hand about what the hell was I doing? So Agile Biker, we're just talking about effective goal setting and how you can be more effective at setting those goals and delivering on those goals. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I am terribly bad at multitasking. And like I said, because I write so rarely, doing that, maybe if I do take that approach of just treating it as an artifact, um, 
But then I get into this like mental debate and like, I can tell you I've had this debate in meetings or interviews. Or, Why am I writing this? I'm not going to go back. <laughs> See, it's terrible. Work in progress limits. This is where Eric is probably laughing at me. Or probably really so. Where, where I just get to this point where I, instead of listening to the person, my, my brain is arguing itself. <laughs> so then that becomes a dis I've found for me personally, clearly I'm in the uh, minority and that I am most effective in fully focusing. What I then try to do after that meeting or after that discussion is I take five minutes, try and just write a couple things down. Um, ultimately, I don't do anything with those, but I think it falls in line to what other people have talked about, about writing it helps people see it, retain it. That is effective for me when I do it after, but when I do it mid whatever, oof, everything goes sideways. <laughs> people do that. People post pictures of their notebook. I'm sure people. But yeah. <laughs> do that I cannot do that again that's just not a skill yeah Lynn that's it just one of those things that I found applying all of the principles that we you can just apply it to yourself it's really good at getting work done and the most important work and enabling you to not focus on things that don't really matter or matter less i found that to be a much better tool Yeah, actual biker on the keeping yourself accountable. That that's where I've because I prioritize others first. I've tried to tweak the wording, my personal mental user story around the business value that's delivered to my customers, <laughs> not about for me personally. I found that if I can view friends and family as as my customers and then word things in my brain as delivering value for them, then I find my focus, attention, all those things higher, better, stronger. Do you have one that works effectively? That would be interesting because I've found in my journey of podcasting streaming that like so my 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 buddy Bob Galen, who I do the stream with, uh, he's much more effective at generating written word. I've found I have immense comfort in spoken word. That's where I find I can comfortably deliver value through writing things. So when I try and write blog posts, I have a handful on my website at Kazi. You'd be astounded at the amount of time and effort and energy it takes to get one of those to where I'm happy to. But I'm way more comfortable to get a microphone out, put it in front of me, and just talking. It'd be interesting to see. Something like that.
Go to the group. Our box. I bet they are. Competition on Google. Well, you know, I looked at this. I think it's something I've actually looked at for our is I can feed it my file, our podcast, and it will transcribe it because that's been a that's been a common request from listener to have transcribed a version of our podcast. So I think I've actually a few things out under the file. We should transcribe. Yeah, Lynn, that's where I, you know, I don't worry about personal accountability and shame or guilt around that I've had in the past. What I've tried to focus on of late is really understanding me and the drivers that I found that what are the things that drive me to get things done? And just accepting that these are the things that drive me to success. Then just framing things in those terms mentally. And in doing so, that puts them in my wheelhouse to where I can deliver on them and maximize what I'm really good at and stop trying to uh, pretend I'm going to magically get better at something that I'm not. So that's, that's a, that's a tweak that I've made that, okay, that just, just, there's these things I'm not good at. Cool. Get it. Um, but I'm not gonna, I'm not going to beat myself up about it. I'm going to find the thing I'm good at try and reframe those challenges in that and I just start knocking them out. That's been one of those things good for me. Yeah, it's, um, so for me, the, the effort and energy to create written word, I don't find my own personal ROI. I feel as if I can maximize value, effort, generate more content, more useful content through the spoken word or visual word, video, whatever it might be this medium as opposed to writing i think i'm a i think i'm a decent writer uh, friends and family will tell me that i'm that i'm good at it i've tried writing books all kinds of different things um because i appear to have some skill at it but it's the to me it's one of those the juice is not worth the squeeze i have to work really hard to generate content and I find that I can deliver similar value, maybe not as good. I can deliver similar value through spoken word, and I am more comfortable, more I view about it. So that's it. That's that's why I've gone down that. Path. Agile biker, that fear is uh, it never goes away. That's the imposter syndrome. We all live with that. 160 episodes, 
um, we'll say 50, 60 stream. So when I look at the hours I've put behind a microphone, there's still times where there's questions that are asked or a topic that Bob and I are discussing. And there's always a hesitation that goes away. All of the conference speaking, all of that, there's, there's, there's always a little bit of fear of putting yourself out there, but for me, right, we go back to me and effective tools is for me that responsibility. So that responsibility of, I have these, um, interesting, unique experiences and the responsibility gene in me feels a desire to share those so that others may find them useful or not useful and decide to go a different direction. But that's the driver for me. It goes back to that responsibility gene, whatever it might be. As I view it as those that helped me by sharing the similar most guilt feeling as if I should share so I think agile biker if you can figure out through strength finders or other things like that what drives you it might be enough to push you over the edge and I'll keep pushing you and by the way you did fantastic at Red Hat I saw Eric do a fantastic You can't hear me. You need to turn up your audio. Yeah, I've, I've, um, one of the best books that I ever read. That's weird. Hmm. We'll have to figure that out. Agile Biker. So uh, here's one of my favorite. I mentioned I was, I've been down this path of trying to rewrite these different things. Uh, what is the, on writing by Stephen. Here we go. Um, on writing by Stephen King, just it, it was very helpful for me as I went down this path of trying to decide if writing. Yep, that's the one. Yep. Um, he talked about his process for writing. It was very, it just helped me give it a shot and figure things out about writing. All right, so I found that on writing by Stephen King to be very, very useful. Hmm. So if I talk this way, but yeah, I've got, so here's the other thing. Here's the other challenges that I've got. Um, especially today, the whole family's home. So I have this thing, it's called a noise gate to reduce all of the noise. Um, is that if the audio is not above a certain level, it just doesn't record it and doesn't send it through. Yes, exactly, Lynn, that's the one. It is one of the few books that I have read 
cover to cover that has been mentioned on this stream, which makes me supremely happy. <laughs> I must say. <laughs> I wish uh, Kraz457 was here working with him on a regular basis. The number of times he throws out a joke about having read a book and me not having read it, getting out of control. <laughs> yeah, man, I can put that, I can notch that up. I'm excited. Check something off that list. There we go. Uh, the goal met. What's the date today? The third, day three of the year, goal met. A book was mentioned on stream that I actually read. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're in that magical 15 minutes. That 15 minute warning's going off. What else can we talk about? What else can we discuss before we wrap it up in this first stream? of 20 20 which is ridiculous <laughs> you know it's uh agile biker is going to get a real kick out of this i have in my car three different books and a book in my backpack that i carry with me pretty much wherever i go and I'm about 50 pages into all of them. Yeah, I like that topic uh, for next week around what are we all learning? What are we all digging into? I think that's kind of an exciting thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's terribly shocking. Terribly shocking, I know. And that the reading time is where I really, really fail with prioritizing me. Those are all things that really benefit. And I found that the books that I do read are Yes, thank you, Scrum Sarge. Did you use Kazi or Walter points to highlight that? It's Scrum Sarge. Taking it next level, using the Walter point. I think that's what you did, right? Yeah, I think that did it. Oh, dang. Okay, well, you can. You can highlight your message for all others to see. You have the Walter uh, to the left of the text entry box. And for 100 Walter points, it tells you how many Walter points you have. You can highlight your message. It makes sure everybody sees it. Like Agile Bike. This is a great day. I shouldn't, I shouldn't revel joy. Agile biker shit. <laughs> hey, VA Agile, I've been wondering how things are doing for you. Australia, are you safe? How's your house? Yeah, apparently we're all in the same boat starting books. And I've gotten to the point where I'm okay with it. Because it used to be I I felt, I assume, similar shame to other people for having not finished a book. I felt this guilt. 
And I just got to the point where the approach I took was I'm not getting any more value out of it. So I'm going to stop. Yeah. Personal books. I am the worst. Like there's so many books, personal books, forget business books that I often get shamed about like crass 457. What can we do to help you? Yeah, Agile. Holy cow, that is ambitious, my friend. Yeah, Lynn, for me, it's like just reading these remaining X number of pages, I didn't value it. Yeah, VA Agile, I'm, I'm glad to see you're on stream. I was worried that you weren't you were going to be in a bad situation with everything that's going on in Australia, um, that you were in an unsafe place. But it sounds like you're at least safe. You're safe enough to join. That's exciting to hear from you. And if there's anything we can do, I don't know what, we'd be happy to do it. Help you out in any way, because I know that's a scary situation. Ooh, Agile Biker, right in the book. And that's something that I've, the number of books I've started. I actually found that I was most successful in finishing a written word project when it was a screenplay. For some reason, that format fit the way that my brain worked. I was able to actually get from start to finish. Uh, yeah, super crazy fires. It appears unstoppable, creating a lot of health and safety hazards, folks. In VA Agile, lives in Australia, which means it's, I don't know, 1 a.m. there, something like that, on a Saturday morning. So I'm always super appreciative. Yeah, Agile being here. Yeah, I don't watch the news either. Just can be frustrating. But yeah, there you go. So yeah, Agile breaking it down. It just doesn't seem like, like, I don't know how they stop it. I don't, I don't understand what can be done. Just like you got to let it go through. I don't know. There's lots of good articles I could read on the top of, of, of reading. Go figure it out. Yeah, dude, it's crazy. There's, um, I actually get a lot from Reddit about, situation in Australia. That's what I found to be the best. So, okay. I'm going to wrap it up for the day. Um, thank you to everybody for coming in. I will make tweaks to the setup. I will reduce the overall amount of white. We'll do that. I will continue to work on the audio situation, the delay and the volume as referenced by a few other people. And our topic for next week will be the things we're doing to learn and improve. It could be bikes, it could be personal projects, it could be whatever it might be. I think it would be an interesting discussion for us to all put that all out on the table, learn what others are doing, the approaches they're taking, uh, the reference material that they're using and go from there. So thank you all for swinging in for stream of 2020. We will chat next week about all the things with a further refined view that isn't as blindingly white. So we'll get that fixed. All right, my friends, 
thanks for swinging in and we'll chat next week we don't have a stream ending scene yet so it's just gonna uh, abruptly stop <laughs> all right we'll see everybody <laughs>